one of the best things I can do as a teacher is to make you do the things that I wish I had done better when I was starting out. And I'd say one of the top three most important things is having a reference library. You can really never have too many references. The other two are going to be keeping a sketchbook and having an inspiration board or at least some kind of directory or way of gathering things that you like. Um, so references I think are important to make sure that you have plenty of your own that you've taken yourself and and that's for two reasons. One is because that that avoids copyright infringement and that's a very good and practical reason to do that. The second is that it speaks to your own experience and the things that you connect to personally and that is always nice when you have that personal reference point and uh, it also saves a lot of time because you're not googling references when you need them you're pulling from what you have already so this is a bunch of animal references that i've collected primarily in the past year although i did recently scan some underwater fish um, from really old photos um, and they're kind of fun because, you know, some of them are kind of, you know, more um, rare animals. You got a rhinoceros, a giraffe, the zebra is miscategorized and should go into a different category. Um, and I think what's really important with these is to um, make sure that you organize them. So the way I have them organized is everything that is mine and has not been is not under copyright is references dash so that to me indicates that I've taken the photo and I've sorted it and it's mine to use as I see fit I can print the photo paint on top of the photo photo bash with it and I don't have to worry about anybody coming after me anything else is more inspirational and I should probably move it to an inspiration folder rather than a reference folder so um, yeah, let's look at, um, you know, bug photos. These things can be used in a variety of ways. You know, this, um, this particular moth, it could be, I could steal bits of patterning and I could create like a repeated pattern with it. I could just draw the moth. I could use it for textures in a way that's really surprising digitally. Like I could pull it into something else entirely and and just use the texture rather than using any kind of the color. Um, the main thing is that you're collecting all of these references. You know, you go to some place like the NASA Center, which is here around Houston, and you just take a bunch of photos and you keep those photos and you organize them because you don't know when they're going to be useful later. Whenever you have, uh, whenever you travel, take photos, um, even if they're just with your phone. Um, anything that you see that's interesting, you know, whether that's rocks or landscape, um, you know, even if you're, you know, going to visit somebody or you happen by a, a place like this, a little pond, and you just take a quick photo, this can be really useful later, especially when we start doing things like photo bashing and um, gathering our inspiration for the, the kind of images that we want to make. Um, even a blurry photo like this that's really just a bad photo can be useful because you can bring in a different attitude or a different uh, a different thing with it you know um, like this is a scanned photo that I took in Italy 21 years ago and it's um, a pretty decent photo it's a bit it's got a bit of a digital error in there and I could, I could actually use that that error in there and use that for, for the basis of glitch, for like glitch art or something like that. And that's something that no one else would quite do and it would be hard to reproduce. You can see that if I zoom in really far, you start to lose the sense of the landscape. You get this color and these strange textures. So if I did a piece that's kind of based on that texture, I could... Um, create a really in interesting piece of abstraction or you could create a background for something or um, you know take this in any number of directions and that's really what we're talking about with um, 
collecting references is that taking the time to collect references and to organize them is a way to wind up with a lot of freedom because you're freeing up time that you don't have to spend looking for stuff you're pulling from a narrow range of sources so that you're really pushing your own creativity and part of it too is that your own personal reference library is rooted in the place that you live and the places that you go and that's one of the most interesting things about art making to me is that when you encounter someone who's made something in a different place it takes you there and it allows you to connect to it in very different ways um, and you might see a different place that you travel to different than somebody else you know like this is a, a market scene and um, it's quite an old photo now but um, I could do something with that market scene. You know, if you were to go back to this exact street corner, you would see something completely different because I'm sure that it's been uh, built, uh, built up and, and changed over the years. And these things are, are really important to do. So this is kind of an ongoing project. And I hope that this is one that you'll continue well beyond the bounds of a digital art course and that you'll just do throughout your life because it's something that I wish I had been better at early on. I'm on a kick right now of doing a very good job of it. And, um, you know, I recommend highly that you, that you do this. And it's going to be very important to just keep your references organized. There are other ways to organize it. You could use Google Photos. You could use online cloud storage. Um, I'm sure there's there's um, other websites that specialize in references and reference collection and creating like combined reference inspiration boards online and however you want to do it it doesn't matter the main thing is just to do it and that starts with taking your own photos